Hello everybody, it is me Jess and welcome to some more F1 2021 content on my YouTube channel and this is the third chapter of Breaking Point. If you missed the last episode, make sure you check it out, link will be in the description. Basically, we guided Aiden Jackson to his first F2 title and he managed to make his way into Formula 1 and he raced around Australia and around China and things didn't go too well between himself, his teammate and Devon Butler. Them colliding in Australia and Aiden and Casper making contact in China. So their relationship is a bit rocky at the moment. We'll have to wait and see if it improves when we head to the next chapter, which is around France, and it's a 25% race. So we'll see how Aiden copes and if he has better form than in previous races. So without further ado, let's get cracking with the episode. So now we're at the French Grand Prix. The recent series of incidents with his teammate Casper, both on and off the track, have marred the start of Aiden Jackson's rookie F1 season. It's now time for the circuit to pull the card and Jackson is keen to find the form that brought him so much success in F2. It's a great day for racing here at Le Castellet and the drivers are making their final preparations on the grid. Let's hope for a thrilling contest then here at the French Grand Prix. Mastering a lap of Paul Ricard means getting to know 15 corners, 6 left and 9 right, for an overall lap distance of 3.6 miles. The two halves of the long Mistral Strait are separated by a heavy braking zone into a potential overtaking hotspot at the Chicane Noor. And watch out for the drivers running onto the distinctive coloured stripes, which are low in grip and highly abrasive. Here we are then at the circuit Paul Ricard in France, the 10th race of the 2020 Formula One season. And the standings are starting to take some kind of shape, Ant. Yeah, exactly. You've got your big three jostling for position at the top, so no surprises there. A little less predictable in the midfield, but you could make an argument for Alfa Romeo underperforming somewhat. The two Alfa Romeo drivers denying each other points, perhaps. Well, it's all to race for, and there's a lot of the season left ahead of us. So let's see how it all pans out. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Leclerc, Sergio Perez, and Ricardo, Norris, Vettel, Sainz, and Lance Stroll, Ocon, Ackerman, Devon Butler, and Albon, Gasly, Grosjean, George Russell and Aidan Jackson, Magnussen and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. So we're in P18 on the grid, ready for Chapter 3 of Breaking Point. Now, don't forget, we can't change fuel mixtures in the race. We have to keep it on standard. So we're going to put a little bit extra fuel just so we can have enough to get into this race. And also we're going to keep it as soft to medium as our strategy just to help us with the undercut. So without further ado, let's get started. We got one light, two light, three light, four light, five lights. And we are underway. Not quite the start that we are hoping, but the objective is to beat both McLaren and Renault drivers. Now we're getting swamped already into turn one. And we've already got caution, and I might have caused a little bit of issues already from the start. But I don't think we got any damage from it to try and get a few people off the start. So we got to, I think, one of the Alpha Tauris. Yep, we got the Alpha Tauri. That's all good. Next person to get will be Alexander Albon. As we head towards turn A, we've got Ocon trying to go for a move as well. Slightly lower down the order. Right, this corner is a little bit understeery, but we almost try to get Butler here. Can't quite do it on this occasion. We could get him on the outside. 
a little bit of a log tap, but we eventually got him, maybe. We almost went into the pit, which is ideally not what we want to do. So we're up into 14th position. Next on our hit list is Alexander Alban. So we couldn't quite get him here, unfortunately. But I think we'll just stay tucked in behind him as we head towards one of the most understeery parts of the track. Heading towards turn eight now. No DRS as of yet though. As we're now, potentially could get Ocon, but there's not much space, unfortunately. This is shaping up to be an interesting race. We haven't even got one of the Renaults yet. Could we get Esteban Ocon in and two of the final few corners? So we'll see what we could do. We're going to have DRS, I think, very, very soon. DRS enable then. Try and get him here. Clip the bollard just a little bit. We did get him, which is good news. May have been a little bit dirty, but there you go. Next to our teammate Ackerman. He has not been on the good side for us, but obviously we'll try and keep it cleaner in this race. DRS enable for Ackerman. We've got DRS as well. We're using our overtake. Defend for our light. And we did get past, which is good. Use our overtake button again. DRS. Got good slip stream. Probably defend to the right. Attack to the right. I think we got him. Nice and easy. And that's what Jeff said. Next is Lance Stroll as well. And we've got Sainz directly in front as well as Sebastian Vettel as well. Ideally, we want to overtake before the pit stops. But you never know. we got DRS once again, but so does Stroll. So we've got to keep to the slipstream. Try and get him here. There we go. Another person down. Sebastian Vettel is probably going to be the hardest to overtake, but you never know with these type of scenarios. You could get sides actually on the same situation. Don't forget, Sainz was in the McLaren back in 2020, so. And we could potentially get a couple of cars, but we got to keep within Vettel's slipstream here. So a little bit further away than we would have liked. I don't think we're going to get the move. Oh, a bit of contact from me and Vettel. Probably not something we should have done, but hey how it happened. I think we got away with it. I think it's just our tyres that are a bit on the bad side. Especially our front, so I would say. So heading towards turn 10. Again, a little bit further back than we would have liked. I think the undercut is probably going to help us here. So we'll see what we can do. Let's just hope there's not a queue in the pit lane. Not the best pit entry. Which maybe means we could lose a bit of time. But you never know. The race is not over. Grosjean has also gone into the pits too. Oh, 
Right, there we go. Not a bad pit stop, 2.3 seconds. We now go on into the medium compound of tyres for the rest of the race. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. So make sure we don't cross the pit lane exit line and make sure we get the best outlap we can. Use as much overtake as we possibly can as well. And we should be perfect. Starting to get a little bit overcast as well. And I can't remember what the pit lane loss is around here actually as well. So that's why getting the best outlap is very, very important. Struggle with the curves a little bit here as well, but we'll see. We're fast in sector two right now, so we are gaining. Oh, I'm not. It might be the game that's telling us porcupines, but I think I could cope these sets of corners a lot better on this game. Right, our teammate in the pits. Casper is in the pits. We got signed in as well. It's crucial that we can get ahead of these guys because we were stuck in traffic. Right, so can we get ahead of them? That is my question. We got ahead of Perez as well. That's good. But the most bad thing is Ocon is 16.3 seconds in front. But I believe he has to go into the pit. So that's all good for us. We're in 10th at the moment. And I think we have Noise coming in next. So as long as we stay ahead of Noise, then that's good. We're setting personal best in sector 1 and 2, which is always good. Oh, a bit of an understeering moment coming through here. Which is not ideal. Right, Ocon is in the pits. Ocon is in the pits. That means we've got to push. We've got to push, guys. Oh, not the best entry heading into the final corner. Understeery again. Gasly's also in the pits as well. Can we get ahead of Ocon? And we set the fastest lap of the race as well. So I don't know if we reached our objective yet. So it's Bottas Hamilton, who's on the mediums too. I think we are ahead of both Renaults, I think. I just hope that Ricardo or Noise is not leading the race. Because then we're pretty much buggered if that's the case. So it's just going to be a quiet race for us until we can get past Bottas and Hamilton. I want to know who's leading. I want to know who's leading so bad. The gap now between Valtteri Bottas and me is 4.4 seconds. Well, 4 seconds actually, not 4.4. Four seconds. And um, Max Verstappen was leading the race, but Lewis Hamilton overtook him. And we're on shot for our podium, so it's going to be quite difficult. But if we keep pushing fastest lap ruts like that, then it's doable, it's achievable. Still not gaining the way we would have liked either on the leaders, so something to focus on. But. This is just bonus time right now. Because we're already... we already reached our objective. We've beaten the two McLarens and the two... Renaults. We didn't even need to pass Norris on track. We just did well with the undercut. We pitted a lap earlier. Life is good. Right, so we brought the gap down to 3.4 now, which is really good. Three more laps to go. Can we do it? Comment down below if you think we could do it and then tell us if you if you were right. Now, 3.0, so four tips gained in that little corner moment, which was good. We always seem to get understeer before the pit lane. 
I really hope some people make subs and I know I said that in like previous streams and that but that would probably be so much easier so heading towards the next phase of this race can we get a podium or will our chances fade now 2.1 is the gap balancing our ERS is key now we're watching the battery levels go down and not using too much. Oh, can we get Bottas? Oh, it's going to be harder than it looks. Oh, come on. Heartbreak will probably happen around Paul Ricard if we can't get him. Right, here we go. Final lap. Final lap of this race. Come on. Oh, this is ever so close, man. Oh, my God. Eight temps now. We're going to have DRS into turn eight, which is going to be ideal for us. I can taste it. I can feel it. Oh, my God. It's going to be so good. And, Jess, you do not mess this up just don't mess it up just look at that train behind as well that's insane we get bot no we could not get bot out here unfortunately but we could do the most bravest move of our life We'll see if we can gain on the corners. So I think it's going to be Lewis Hamilton that wins the race. Verstappen's going to come across the line in P2. But this is where the real battle is, folks. Right then. Can we do it? I think it's not going to be enough unless we get the move towards the final corner gonna be insanely close oh all right race over 0 0.017 we were so close but we didn't do it the mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today they should be proud business as usual for the big three but a bit of a reshuffle in the midfield here in france that's certainly much better from Alfa Romeo. Frankly, they should be in the mix more often. On a good day, they're as good as anyone in that midfield pack. And they've certainly proved it today. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team. And they certainly deserve it. Great work out there today. Let's have your thoughts. So, Aiden, it's a great result for you here today. The team must be delighted with a solid points finish. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good. It's a solid result, but there's always room for improvement. I'm sure we'll be looking at all the data from today and working out how we can build on it for the rest of the season. Well, it's such a great result, especially since it's your first season in Formula One. Would you say you've found your feet now since the jump to F1? I think there's always going to be hurdles. And look, you never know what's around the corner. Change is always difficult, but I think I'm settling in. The team seems happy at least. So there's no current tensions within the team. We've all seen that you and Casper have locked horn so far this season. Is that something that's now behind you? I think there's always going to be a settling in period. It doesn't matter who you're paired up with. You've got to have a strong character to do what we do. We may have our differences, but I'm sure we'll get there. Thank you for your time.
Right then, so a much better result for us as a team and it's going to help Alfa Romeo as a contender in the crowded middle pack of the F1 grid, which I think a lot of fans are going to be very, very happy with. So there we go, Jackson finding form in France to bring home the points for Alfa Romeo with each of the race weekends so far having one thing in common, the quiet improvement of the new Alfa Romeo driver Aidan Jackson. After a few notable instances at the start of the season, Jackson's driving is finally starting to come into its own. I think there's always going to be hurdles, Jackson replied with a refreshing modesty when asked if he thinks he's now found his feet driving an F1. Change is always difficult, but I think I'm settling in. Now, after an incredible performance at the French Grand Prix, Jackson has not only settled in, but he's strongly displaying the skills that brought him up into F1. As the season continues, we're sure that all eyes will be glued to this young driver, and with good reason. And you can see there, Vettel announcing Ferrari departure. So we'll see what the socials are as, as good. So we say points are points. Nice job, Alfa Romeo. And we do have a phone call from Brian. Just so you know, there's a full team meeting in 20 minutes. No worries. We just want to review our strategy while the race is still fresh in our minds. Right, okay. I'll see you there. Hey, listen, while you're on, I just wanted to say that was some solid driving out there today. I'm impressed. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Put it this way. It's been noticed. Well done, Kit. I'll see you in the meeting. There we go. So Brian is definitely happy with us. And I think the social media department, I think, is very happy with us as well. Oh, no. We got another call from my mummy. Hey, Ma. Hello, love. Just calling to say well done, as usual. You okay? Thanks, Mum. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Real good. I think I delivered today. I thought so. And I think the neighbours probably did too. <laughs> I couldn't stop shouting. <laughs> oh, not again. I'm so proud of you, Aiden. Hey, it's Silverstone soon. So does that mean you'll be home for a few days? Probably. I'll try and get over for a day or two, either side of race weekend. You know, Silverstone was always your dad's favourite track. I know. You're still coming to the race, right? Do you really think I'd miss out on the VIP treatment? Of course I'm coming. I just wish it wasn't on my own, you know? Yeah, I know, but I'll be there. And I can't wait to see you. Me too. Anyway, I won't keep you. I imagine you want to go and celebrate. Well done again. Love you. Love you too, Mum. Speak soon. Ah, Aiden's mum is very, very supportive, which is really great to see. So, Rob Buxton is happy with our performance. GC Robot, or oh, what a name. Um, solid performance from Jack to foul from A. Point consistency to swipe rumours of team tension. What the Vettel's going. So, they were speaking about the retirement. Um, Got to say, Jack's is really surprising me. Really strong rookie season. And this is very interesting. And Tommy wants Aiden to do some streaming. I <laughs> love it, love it. So we'll check our emails now. Jeff says, nice one, Aiden. That was a tough race out there today, but seriously, well done finishing in the points. We got P4, that's more than points. Anyway, I meant to say at the debrief, it's great to see how you're improving and even better to be a part of it. There we go. Just caught up with your interview with Claire. I want to say thanks for being so diplomatic when asked about how things went out with Casper. It really helps the image of the team. You've been able to feel questions like that and makes my job so much easier. And I forgot to mention, I gave an interview to Trackside a couple of weeks ago. Had a great time doing it. Maybe you've seen it. That's interesting. You might want to have a word with your PAs. He said he's not heard much back. Wow, that is interesting. So we read all our emails. So we are going to be wrapping up for today's episode and video so thank you guys so much for watching if you like what you see so far in f1 2021 make sure you smash that thumbs up button click the red subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when to see some more f1 2021 content we'll be back with some more breaking point videos soon i'll see you later have a good day goodbye